Hey Survivor Geeks, please like, share, and subscribe. Check out my Survivor Puzzle app and my merchandise store. The links are below in the description. I am exuberant, curious, and calculated. Calculated being my favorite word. <laughs>on dating apps. One of my prompts is I'm convinced that I can win Survivor and I've been collecting all the different responses of all these different men. You're not gonna win if I'm on the show or you really think you're gonna win. If you doubt my skill set, red flag. If you're mentioning players like Parvati and Boston Rob to me, green flag. I'm a manager of finance and operations. It's a very strategic role. I gather all of the data points. I analyze them, knowing how to move the business forward if we are doing good or bad. Same thing in Survivor. I'm gonna have to continuously update my gameplay based on how things go. Because I did grow up in a predominantly white area, I did change things about myself in order to fit in. It took me some time to fully embrace who I am instead of trying to run away or hide from it. And I think it's the perfect timing for me to go into a game meeting people as who Annika is. If I were introducing myself, I would say this is John Lovett. He is a former presidential speechwriter and TV writer. He is now a podcast host and he's best in small doses. Being a speechwriter is about figuring out the best way to convince a bunch of people to either come along with you or agree with you or support you. I think that's a lot of what Survivor is. Final Tribal, it's a political campaign, it's an election, and it is very fun to think about, but I know that if I'm thinking about that, I'm not thinking about what I have to do to get there. When Pod Save America listeners and Love It or Leave It listeners discover that the reason I was gone for five weeks is to be on Survivor, they're gonna think that that is bananas, but there was something really exciting about putting that aside to focus on this game where everybody starts at zero and, and it'll be okay. Once I get talking, you'll see. It's, just, it's worse for me than it is for you. I'm just an odd person. I love people, I love games, I love like challenging myself, I love money. So like, what is there not to love about Survivor? <laughs>I design user interfaces. When you're using an app, you don't necessarily notice the color or like the buttons or the typography that's being used. All of those things should feel really seamless. That's how I want to integrate myself in this game. No one's really like actually paying attention to the fact that I'm there all the time. I'm weird and I'm like quirky and just like a little neurotic and a little too much at times. And I think my husband Derek is the absolute foil to my personality. We just like really balance each other out. I hope that I can find somebody out here that has similar characteristics and is able to keep me in check. <laughs> I've been thinking about this Goldilocks complex. Not too smart, but not unstrategic. Not too physical, but not too weak. Just being right in that like middle spot, that's key to winning. I have the ability to charm and disarm. This is a social game, like that's really good. <laughs> I work in computer learning and natural language. It's the science of language. It's Survivor. It's a game of conversations. And so I'm gonna be especially attuned to that social element of the game. I was really, really close with my cousin, Ashley. She named me the godfather to her firstborn. A year later, we lost Ashley to domestic violence and they don't have parental figures. I can be someone that they can look up to. What better way of showing that than like following my dream? I can come back home and look at Chase and say, this is how you live life. People are looking at me and thinking that I am another Austin. Solid, dependable, but ultimately beatable. If people see that in me, I can capitalize on that and just play like a snake. <laughs> All right, so we've got two teams, right? Two squads. They're both going out. Oh, wait, let me, re let me restart this because I got to think of a challenge. For <laughs> what I do in esports is what Jeff does on Survivor. Jeff does all the shot calling, and that's exactly what I do in the video games. I've been traveling all around the world. I've been all the way to Saudi Arabia, casting $2 million Fortnite tournaments. When I'm watching Survivor, the second the challenge starts, I'll mute it, and then I'll start commentating over the challenge, and then I'll rewind it, and then listen to how Jeff does it, and see like where I can improve, because I mean, Jeff is the goat of it, so you know, you gotta learn from the best. 
I feel like people's first impressions of me are gonna be, man, this guy is loud. I don't know if this guy's got a lot going on upstairs, but guess what? I, I like to think that I'm smart. I took an IQ test, it was like 135. I don't know how accurate it is, but hey, I'll take it. I got a lot of things up my sleeve that a lot of these players aren't gonna be able to see just from looking at me, and so I'm gonna be a very, very scary player, and I, I truly believe I'm by far one of the biggest threats out here to win this game. It's just as green and vibrant and wonderful as it is on TV. I was thinking you guys had a little bit of a filter. It wasn't gonna actually be this gorgeous. It's stunning. Water polo is like a game of viciousness. What you're not seeing under the water, that's what the real war is. Kicking you underwater and like trying to drag on your bathing suit. People don't think I can fight, I can't fight. And that is the mentality you have to have out here in Survivor where people are attacking you, but you have to keep swimming. The way I approached business school was I basically craft my own Survivor major. Classes like selling yourself and your ideas, power in organizations. This will help me in my professional life but this will really help me in Survivor. I don't think I come across as smart as I appear. I'm strategic, I'm cunning, I'm ruthless, I'm willing to do what it takes to achieve and succeed. I'm perfectly poised to be the wolf in sheep's clothing, and that's why I'll be the sole survivor. If we sit next to each other on a plane, I will talk to your ear off, and I literally have at least six or seven contacts in my phone of so-and-so's name, airplane. I always thought I'm gonna be married by 23, I'm gonna have kids by 25, and I am 32 and single. What that has prepared me for is to be adaptable, because I don't know what Jeff is gonna throw at us. All I know is that I have the ability to create strong relationships, and that's what's gonna carry me through the game. If I see somebody that seem unapproachable, they seem impossible to work with, I'm gonna wanna make it happen because I'm gonna feel that personal satisfaction that I was able to win them over because I saw people like Marianne, like Shan, Katora, seeing someone like me and thinking, wait, if they could do it, I could do it. And so if I could do that for some other girl out there, I think that's inspiring. It used to be a cliche and now it's not anymore. I, I wanna make this a cliche again. I'm not here to make friends. Growing up, I had two older brothers, so I constantly had to watch them do things that I couldn't do just because I wasn't old enough. I had to figure out ways around those rules. It's kind of how I learned to operate within the world. You can cut corners, lie, cheat, and steal to get ahead and get little advantages that stack up throughout life. So I think being a talk show host is one of the perfect jobs to have coming into Survivor, knowing when it's your time to be the guy and take up all the air in the room, and when it's time to recoil and let something else take up that spotlight. It's all about working people. I don't care about these people. They don't mean anything to me before this game, and if they don't mean anything to me after this game, it's not gonna change my life at all. I'm here to build a legacy in the game that I love and walk away with a million dollars. That's it. But the problem is, I'm a terrible liar, so I don't know. I'm gonna be really, really grateful if I'm here on like day four. I am a corporate lawyer, which means my phone is going off all the time. So life is busy and chaotic and complicated and stressful, but I love it. It's not that I have a passion for the law, I really don't, but I have a passion for problem solving and for people, and so that's gonna help me out here. I will absolutely not be telling people that I am a lawyer. Post 45, hell no, three out of the final six were lawyers. There's no way that I can tell people I'm a lawyer, or they'll be like, Kate, nice to meet you, bye. I gotta be really careful about who I show the inner workings of my mind to. I'm gonna win, and win by like unanimously with no one ever voting for me throughout the whole game. And anything less than that will be a complete failure. <laughs> the adjectives that I used to describe myself, or other people used to describe me, I'm just gonna say it, adorable, I don't know, yeah. Part of being an ER doctor is strategizing and prioritizing and triaging and just having that chaos at all times. Nights to days, gunshot wounds to stab wounds, just like that emotional whiplash and like the ER trains me for that. You never know what's coming at you, but you still have to be in control of it. You have to know the strategy of what to do next. That's exactly what Survivor is. I was very 
strategic about when I came out. My parents, they would view this as a distraction. That's why I had to be so patient. And once I had achieved becoming a doctor, I could live my life. I wanted to prove that I can achieve anything I want to be, and that's irregardless of my sexual orientation. Some of my extended family still don't know that I'm gay. And so they were like, maybe you could just pretend you're not. Hell to the no. I'm here to play and share everything about me. And here I am now. A lot of times when I'm around, people are laughing. I like to call myself a hoot. I am actually a surgical nurse, so I work for a plastic surgeon. So I get to be that like surgical guide to walk all of these patients throughout the process. So really, I end up being a lot of time the therapist, and I really want to be somebody that my you know tri mates can turn to and be like, "Hey, I'm feeling down. I feel like I can bring that to them." People look at me and just see a little Sierra on my head. There's so much more to Sierra than just pageant Sierra. Being a, like a Phillies ball girl, playing softball my entire life, being in the service industry for over 12 years, to now being a registered nurse. And I was born for the game of Survivor. So I'm ready. I'm out here to play for my dad. He has gone through hell and back the last two years with like chemo infusions, blood transfusions. His last like few words to me were just like, go get him, bud, like bring it home and you know, come home a millionaire. Um, <laughs> And that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I got swallowed a bug. <laughs> So I like to do this thing called the bump and run derby. There's lefts and rights, there's humps and bumps, and the main goal of the game is to cross the finish line, and if that means putting somebody into the wall along the way, so be it. It's been preparing me for Survivor because there's a bunch of different strategies that you could take, but there's only one of us that are going to cross that line. I grew up kind of rough, lived in a house that didn't have electricity. It was just a little bit of a fumble, but I met my fiance coming out of high school. She like really inspired me to want to do more with myself. So the home where I did a lot of my growing up, I've demolished that home and decided to build our own home there. She just fueled a growth inside of me that's, that's been remarkable. Oh, my moose. That's my girl. Moose is my daughter. Given the fact that I grew up so rough, I've just wanted to create like a really solid foundation for her. Even more reason to bring home that money, right? Yo, you know it. That's, I, I'm bringing it home. I want to be remembered as the oldest woman to ever win Survivor. When I first got into the aviation industry, I'd have such a pushback from the men. I felt like they almost laughed at me. So I'm gonna keep pushing forward and none of them matter. Now I have a really successful flight school and everyone in the area knows who we are. We need more women in the aviation industry. Only 6% is women. My goal is to try to open this up to women. They need to be empowered and I was totally underestimated. Coming here, I feel it's gonna be very similar. These people look at the old person, they think they're the weak person here. Between my work ethic and my level of competition, they're gonna soon realize that they're gonna want me here. And my grandson will always remember his grandma kicking butt on Survivor. Even now, I just sit here and I see like ants and bugs crawling, I'm just like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> So when I was 14, I was diagnosed with FSGS. It's a pretty rare kidney disease. I had 50% kidney failure by the time I found out anything was even wrong with me. And I was told by three different doctors that I wasn't gonna make it. Nothing's gonna be as bad as dying, right? So I mean, at the end of the day, like, I don't really care what adversity I face. I'm just excited to be in all of this and just experience it all. I've been wanting to play football my whole life. My sickness and illness, I couldn't play anymore. So I just told myself, if I can't play in the NFL, I'm gonna work for the NFL in some type of capacity. I'm in athlete marketing. I essentially play a middleman between partners and players. You're dealing with all types of people in my line of work. You got people who's from a country town all the way in middle Tennessee somewhere, and then you have a guy who's from urban New York. I have to treat them the same, and I have to work with them the same, so I think that'll help me here as well. When you hear Hawaii, you think, vibe, go with the flow. But in reality, I'm gonna be cutting throats. So I'm hoping they think I'm just here for a fun little ride. But they have no idea what's lurking under the surface. I'm constantly seeing where I can grow and evolve as a human being. 
I was a Division I college athlete, got my master's in educational leadership in policy, and I am a flight attendant for Hawaiian Airlines, but I do want to become a pilot. Winning that million dollars is gonna help a lot with pilot school. I was an alternate for season 45. I was obviously pissed. However, looking back on it, I'm so grateful that Hannah stuck it out for those two extra days. And I know that things are gonna work out the way they're meant to work out. We will be deplaning shortly, AKA Jeff snuffing your torch. As you proceed out of the aircraft, go ahead and shock it back to us because it was not personal. We still love you anyway. Everybody wants to find an idol, but idols are like curses now. So individual immunity works just fine for me. That one I don't have to overthink. <laughs> My first memory is me and my brother sitting cross-legged as Jeff is reading the votes in Survivor Cook Islands. We're just chanting, Ozzy, 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 as Jeff reveals the last vote. Yule, tears, we are like distraught. You would have thought our dog died. Sports and Survivor were like two of my things growing up and I hit the age where you kind of realize, okay, not gonna be a professional athlete for a living. How else can I get involved? Sports reporting gave me an outlet. I think in sports reporting, you have to know how to stroke an ego, how to ask the right question to get information out of people. I've kind of fine-tuned those skills. I've always been a little bit more than just the sports guy. I did musical theater, I did drama, I, I wrote poetry. As soon as you've made a connection with me, like the vulnerability comes flowing out. So I'm not afraid to show a little waterworks sometimes. My bucket list consists of everything from day one to day 26 that could possibly happen. I want to do everything. I've been developing my social game in life since I was about this big. I grew up dressing like a boy, wanted no attention for it, so had to distract them from having questions about me. That's really taught me how to just befriend any type of personality. In college, I was surrounded by people in sororities and working in the technology industry, it is alpha male sales bro personalities. I know how to get along with anybody and even people that I don't like so much, like I know how to make them like me. <laughs> the energy that I'll bring forth is a pickpocket from the Oliver Twist universe, stealing their trust, their hearts, their spot in the final three, and before they know it, they voted for me and I won. God, why am I crying so much right now? I don't do this. I don't like talking and just, <laughs> I help people with uh, neurodegenerative disorders like Parkinson's disease. I'm just the rep. A neurosurgeon's implant electrodes in the part of the brain that affect your movement. They're tremoring like crazy, and then all of a sudden, in an instant, those tremors are gone, and it's, it's a great feeling. I've won over 200,000 playing poker tournaments. When I make a move, I'm not lying to you. I'm bluffing you. I can take that emotion out because, in the end, this is the game, the best game ever. Obviously, there aren't many Koreans in Oklahoma, so I stood out right away. It was rough, I got picked on a lot, but I also always stood up for myself. It turned me into the man I am today. In order to be the best you can be, you're gonna suffer. And so I think if I embrace how difficult it's going to be here, it's going to make it that much easier.